In this screencast, we're going to take a look at some properties of matter and some basics about the periodic table. Properties of matter can be classified in two general um, ways. One is extensive properties. Extensive properties depend on the amount of matter that is present. So let's say, for example, you pick up a rock. Okay, an extensive property of that rock would be the mass because the mass will change depending on the size of the rock. Or the volume is also an extensive property because the amount of space that the rock takes up changes depending on the rock that you pick up, the size of it. Another extensive property is the amount of energy that is in a substance. In contrast, intensive properties do not depend on the amount of matter present. Um, if you pick up a rock, the density is going to be the same whether it's a small rock or a large rock. These are measured values that do not change. So melting point. Um, so for example, it doesn't matter how much ice you have. If you have a small ice cube or a large block of ice, the melting point is the same. So that's an intensive property. Boiling point, ability to conduct electricity, and ability to transfer energy as heat are all examples of intensive properties. So again, the two general characteristics or types of properties are extensive, which depend on the amount of matter, and intensive, which do not depend on the amount of matter present. So now we're going to switch over to just taking a quick look at the periodic table. The periodic table is set up with a series of rows and columns. Okay, so these vertical columns in the periodic table are called groups or families. And each group contains elements with similar chemical properties. So for example, this first column of the periodic table, all of these elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, they all have a similar set of properties. Um, one of those properties is that they react very violently when you put them in water. So every single element in that group reacts in a similar way. As you move across a row on the periodic table, these are called periods. And within a period on the periodic table, the physical and chemical properties are similar, but they also change in a regular pattern across the periodic table. And finally, um, it's not colored here in this picture, but this last column in the periodic table, so helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon, these are the noble gases. And we're going to talk a little bit more about them here in a few minutes. The periodic table can be separated into a couple of um, broad classifications. And the first one is metals. The metals are everything to the left of the staircase on the periodic table. A metal is an element that is a good electrical conductor and a good heat conductor. Some properties of metals are is that most of them are solids at room temperature. They are malleable, and this means that they can be hammered or rolled into thin sheets. So think of like um, a copper bowl, a hammered copper bowl, okay? So the copper can be molded into a shape because it's malleable. Ductile means that they can be drawn into a fine wire. Um, again, thinking of copper, you can have a very, very thin copper wire. That's because it's ductile, and it will conduct electricity and heat well. Some examples of metals are gold copper, and aluminum. You'll notice in these pictures they're all shiny. In general, metals are going to be shiny unless they've been oxidized, and that's like if you've ever seen silver that's tarnished, that's when it's been oxidized. So as long as it's not oxidized, um, your metal will be shiny. The next classification are the nonmetals, and the nonmetals are on the right-hand side of the periodic table, and here in this graphic, you can see all the elements that are considered nonmetals. It's just a few elements of the periodic table that are nonmetals. A nonmetal is an element that is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Properties of nonmetals are a lot of them are gases. Um, the ones that are solids are brittle, and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Some examples of nonmetals we have carbon, sulfur, phosphorus, and iodine. So you can see that they're brittle, they break apart, they're powders, um, just very different from what we saw in the examples of metals. In between the metals and the nonmetals on the periodic table is this thin strip of elements that are called metalloids. Metalloids are elements that have some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of nonmetals. 
And it basically depends on the condition that that element is in, whether it behaves like a metal or a nonmetal. All of the metalloids are solids at room temperatures. They conduct electricity better than the nonmetals, but not quite as well as the metals. So we call them semiconductors. And finally, the last column of the periodic table are the noble gases. Um, they're in what we call group 18 or group 8A, depending on how your periodic table is numbered. Generally, the noble gases are unreactive. Uh, we can force them to react with some elements, but in general, they don't react at all. And these are all gases at room temperature. So, in conclusion, your periodic table is separated into three main groups the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. And also, the final group is called the noble gases, and that is in column 18 or column 8A. Make sure you take complete notes on this screencast and submit them to Mrs. Benke, and then complete the assignment that is listed in Schoology.